Howdy y'all, this is Clay. And I am Lloyd. Good and morning. This is Iron Sharpening Iron with the Kaler Boys. Welcome everybody. Glad to have y'all here. Um, Thursday, March 7th. Thursday, I like, March 7th. I like to put a, a date on it. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I see agree. a lot of videos and you're like, when is, then you got to do investigating. Right. You got to look at the comments, see when they comment. You see one that's, you know, six weeks ago. It's not really relevant right now. I mean, you know, right. but anyway. I, uh, I, had, I got confronted at church on Sunday. One of the sweet little ladies at church came up to me and she said, I could barely hear Lloyd on the podcast. I know, I know. <laughs> didn't have it on. It wasn't on. So he had his good. microphone on on his chest, but he didn't turn the button or hit the button and turn it on. So the you, you picked him up across the table on my microphone. But we got it straightened out today. And I've waited. I've been thinking, trying to think all week long how I could blame it on you. Yeah. No. So do I need to start turning it on before I give it to you? Well, no. 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 Yeah, like I said, I tried. You like I tried. I tried all week long to figure out a way. Yeah, I wasn't well. successful. Oh man, so glad to have you guys with us. Uh, I'm going to suggest we jump it right into the scripture of the day. Come on, and then because uh, we got a lot to talk. I'm about I'm chomping today. it a bit. A lot to talk about today. We are coming out of Philippians chapter four. You know I love Philippians. You know I love chapter four. And uh, the Apostle Paul is writing to this church now. A couple of things you need to understand about this. Um, this church was going through a bit of a crisis. Um, it was, first of all, it was hard to be a Christian in the first century. Um, and so Paul's writing to him, and listen to what he says. Rejoice in the Lord always. 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 Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. I was telling somebody that yesterday. <clears throat> Let your gentleness, gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. I like that. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I love that part. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. I love that through Christ Jesus. Um, he says, rejoice in the Lord always, no matter what you're going through. You know, you could be standing at the graveside of a family member and Paul says, rejoice in the Lord. You could be going through heartache. You could be going through difficulty. You could be you could be wondering how in the world you're going to make your mortgage payment this month. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Listen to this. Let your gentleness be known to all men. We are, we are called, you know, in, in another uh, place in the Word of God, we're, we're called to be kind. Be kind. It doesn't cost That's anything. right. Take time free. to be kind, right? Take time to be kind. It's free. Free, um, free, free. <clears throat> And then he says this, the Lord is at hand. He is reminding them right after telling them to be gentle. He, he's reminding them the Lord's right there. He's watching. You. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be the hand raiser. Now this, less provoked. this is where we get into the meat of it. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. If you have a thankful spirit, you can rejoice no matter what you're going through. If, you know, there, there's that old hymn. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. You know, if you're thankful for what God has done, no matter what you're going through, David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Um, if you're thankful, there, there's no circumstance that can steal your joy, right? Why? It's perspective also. Yeah. And then he gets into this, dude, listen to this. And the peace of God. The peace that, that God allows to fall on the believer. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. You can't even describe it. Will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This isn't some passive feeling of peace. This is an active peace that guards your heart and guards your mind. This is uh, this scripture is, is I, I'm just almost in, in I see it. I see it. That this, boy, whoo. God did it again, did he? Yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. When I first became saved, and I was uh -huh. the first off the peace that surpasses all understanding. I, I absolutely know that exactly what that washes over you. Oh yeah, I, I, when I could not wait to get back to the care center to tell Brandy that I was wrong. Yeah, uh, you know they said men don't admit they're wrong. Yes, we do. Yeah, uh, I was wrong. God is real, and she's going to be fine. And I just I couldn't wait to get. I had, you know. Previous to that, I was nothing but a ball of tears and grief. You're oh, anxious. My God, grief. Yeah. yeah. 
didn't know what was going on. I had two girls. I uh, right. And and then Mike Warner mm-hmm. would would say that to me all the time. Yeah. And when I really kind of dug into it and figured out the meaning of this, yeah, uh, about not being anxious. Mm-hmm. And, and what what it's saying is, is, no matter what you got going on in your life, if you'll put God first and lay it at His feet, right? Then, well, then you're 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 absolutely done with it. You're if you if you're if you keep picking it back right, up, right? See, then you're not done with it. You haven't right. laid it at His feet. Right. And when I really, really learned that, it was life changing. I watched you live life this changing. out. I watched you live this out life before changing. you got the job you have now, and you you were nursing a broken knee, uh, just had surgery. Uh, the job that you had let you go. Yeah. There, there's no prospect for a job, and here you are crippled up. I mean, you 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 had a hard time walking from your recliner to your truck. Oh yeah, and you had no income. Nope. And I watched you. Just, it'll be fine. God will take care of it. That's it, man. When I'm, it'll be fine. Life changing. When I figured out really what that meant, life changing. I mean, most people would have been a basket case at that point. Life changing, man. And and if I was more anxious for you than you were, and I'm the pastor. (laughs) And and it's it's all about that word. The word is everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Without the word, there is nothing. That peace of God. There's nothing. Nothing. Yeah. The word is what. Created everything. The word his, he spoke. Right. Without the word, there's nothing. Right. And, and if, if, if well, I said this to my mother-in-law yesterday, it was like poetic. And now I can't think of what I said. It would come at rolling. You it know? was good. Huh? It was yeah. It was, it was about just the word is 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 everything. Yeah. And, and without it, you ha- you have nothing. That's exactly it, man. And That's if you exactly try to it. climb it, and and but. Dude, it's it's all about that word of God. It's, it's how you speak and what you speak, well, and, last and the years. understanding of that. And I'm telling you, that was you know you you hear these preachers sometimes saying, you know, that was life changing. And I've heard the preachers all throughout my life say stuff like that, whatever. Life changing, yeah, life changing, well, man. And throughout the years, I have seen you over and over again live this out. Oh, I, I, all the time. Yeah, absolutely, all the time, every day, daily. I tell people all the time, once you prayed about it, leave it go. What are you doing? Right. This is the God of the universe. Spoke. Understand. Yes. Just spoke. And everything that we know and don't know that we've been chasing and trying to find out since our existence, <laughs> all came and he just, whoop, there it was. By the sheer force of his and will. And you think that your little problem is too yeah. much for him? You know, um, I love. He, my- he, count, he knows the count of the hairs on my head. Yours is an easier one than me. Right. <laughs> he knows you're stubble, though. I love uh, I love uh, Genesis one. You know, in, in seminary I learned I learned Greek, and I studied Hebrew. You see the difference? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. learned Greek and I studied Hebrew. This is because Greek was Greek was oh. cool and Hebrew was required. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I told uh, I told uh, the the professor who's a friend of mine, Thomas Rom. I said uh, I said brother, I said I think it'd be easier for me to remove my own kidney with a grapefruit spoon than learn this. <laughs> um, but there's a, I picked up a couple of things, and Genesis one one in the Hebrew is just phenomenal. Um, you know, the Genesis one one says, "In the beginning, God said, let there be light,' and there was light." Uh, that's the English translation. If you do a literal word for word translation from the Hebrew, it says, "God said, light be light was," and that's, <laughs> and and just, that's it right that's there. It. This yeah. is how um, the the he, how. How more emphasis can I put on the fact that he is the creator of everything? And he is all-powerful, all-knowing. On my side. And he's on your side. He absolutely loves me. He <coughs> loves me so much, he sent his son yeah. to die for me. Well, and, and even me. deeper than that, Paul said, Paul said in Romans chapter 8 that God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still in our sins, Christ died for us. Yeah. It, he loved you and made provision for you to be his child when you were still his enemy. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And I'm walking around thumbing my nose at just the existence right. of God. Right. All the while, he's made every preparation necessary. And I him. look back, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. You look back in your life, mm-hmm. and, and I can absolutely see where God was in oh, yeah. all of it. Oh, yeah. All yeah. of it. Yeah. No doubt. He's like, who? I got lucky. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> I promise you didn't. Well, brother, you know, I've been shot twice and shot at more times than I, I could even count. 
you know, uh, between military and law enforcement. And, uh, you know, God, God has been there every step of the way. You know, I almost, any one of them. almost died in the Jeep wreck. Yeah. And then almost died twice on the operating table. Right. I laid my Harley down at 70 miles an hour and that, hit the back tire of, a, of the minivan in front of me with that's, head first. That's a fun ride. Yeah, huh? I'm telling you. Um, you know, been bit right by a rattlesnake. I've been blown up. <laughs> I mean, blown up, <laughs> shot at, smacked around. Yeah. Blessed. Not that's lucky. right. That's blessed. right. Blessed. There's a huge difference. Now, you know who, uh, who I, I'm sure she is blessed, but she's not feeling it right now. And that would be Hillary Haney. Hillary Haney, uh, Super Tuesday came and went and uh, she won two primaries, uh, Washington, D.C. and Vermont. And uh, I was listening to Mark Levin on the radio yesterday and he said, and Vermont's more of a county than it is a state. <laughs> well, true enough. Yeah. And D.C. is not a state. So. You know, I think the first week of, of the illegal crossing of the border, southern border, after the first week of Biden becoming right. president, I think they said there was enough people came in to fill up Vermont. Yeah. So, you know, it's only, right. only a week's worth of illegal migration. Yeah, exactly. And we've had three years. How many numbers is that? So, a lot. So she did. She finally did half of the right thing. She uh, she did withdraw from the race, did, but she did, refused to. Did you hear support. her? Did you hear I her did. support on Trump? I did. She refused to support Trump, and she told in her speech, she told Donald Trump, "Well, it's up to you to try and win my voters over." Basically, is what she said. Wow. Which is well, just, yeah. You know, from the number of voters that she had, they could go ahead and vote for. The cheating party and probably wouldn't make a difference Not, if they if they did a fair election. If a fair election, came, <laughs> I'm already seeing. And if bullfrogs had wings, they wouldn't you know, bump their I, booties when they hop. Let, let's just that's a good little segue. I just showed you a video of a, of the yeah. fairness of the election. Yeah, this, this woman goes to a vote, a Democrat voter. Yeah, yeah. I was going to throw that in in a minute. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to bust the right. bubble. It, it, you know, it's it, this woman goes to vote and they're telling her no that that her. Her party's not voting today. That's right. It's the primary. They said she said I'm aware of a primary. Every case, ed, evidently, this woman has got a little bit of education. She knows what she's there for. Right. What she does. She obviously probably votes every year, and she is a Democrat, and she's allowed in America to cast her vote. You, you would the think the person that you she would think. wants to be president, right. and and it didn't happen right they it, wouldn't allow her to vote at all and she pointed out that there are two other candidates and the and, woman said well they have already selected our candidate and she said well who's they and she the woman said the democrat, the, the party. democrat party and the woman brought the, the the voter who was being denied of her right to vote which is crazy and she's a woman yeah. they ought to throw that in i'm telling oh, you. i'll stir up somebody probably not <laughs> <laughs> but you know uh she so then she's like, well, wait a minute. The Democratic Party is not voters. Right. How can they just decide? Right. It, it, it's, you know, they're the ones hollering that Donald Trump's ruined democracy, the white nationalists, whatever, man, the Christians, Christian anybody that yeah. votes Republican, anybody that likes Donald Trump, anybody that don't like Donald Trump but votes Republican. Yeah. We're all going to ruin democracy. And they're just willy nilly pulling people. They did, already did it like months and months ago. Right. It's already oh, yeah. Yeah. cold news we, now. It happened in Florida. You took, yeah. we, we and, talked about it when, yeah. when you saw that. In Florida, I think we've talked about it previous on podcast. Yeah. We, yeah. In Florida, it happened where there was no choice. Yeah. You just go up there and I don't, what are Jump you voting? Button. What are you voting for? There's not a vote when there's but one person's name. How is that a well, vote? Well, well, back up, back up. In Michigan, they created a choice. None of the above. None of the above. Yeah. 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 Nikki Someone Haley else. lost to that. Someone else. Yeah. You but, know? Uh, you know, how is that any kind of democracy or any kind of well free all America? Right, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be that irritating guy in class that corrects you. The democracy. Yeah. We, we're we, not a we're democracy. We're not in a democracy. We are not and a I democracy. understand that. We, we are a, a, a republic. We're a constitutional republic. Right. Right. But, but we are supposed to have a democratic, a democratic system system yeah. right yeah. and the democratic way to vote and that's not that right no when you no. have limited your people any people i don't care what, i mean anybody I, I can remember when when ross perot was on the ballot. right i voted for him but uh, well I, it's my fault that we had eight years of bill clinton because i voted for ross perot yeah uh he, man, he wanted to do the same thing Donald Trump. I know it. Do. I know it. He was just a little before his time. In that voice, he had the right idea. I know. Oh man. my god. I know. I know. 
But you he know, had the right idea though. He he really did. He, do you know the story about Ross Perot and his uh, his employees that were uh, a part of the Iran uh, hostage situation? No. Oh gosh, Ross Perot hired a a team of mercenaries and went with them, and they infiltrated Iran and rescued his employees. That's a boss. See, I'd I'm vote telling for you, man. I'd vote for him. That's why I voted for him. Yeah. Yeah. Dude's I mean, four foot tall and has a voice like Mickey Mouse, but by God, he's a B.A. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. He's a beast. He, he, and he didn't have any military training, but he went with them. He was he was with them in Iran. He was that aggravated. People. Yeah. He was that, and he's a man. Yeah. He's a man from a different era. He is. He sure is. And he boy, sure we're is. losing that too. Good I'm Lord, did you, you see that? Trans saint from the military doing her speeches. I did not. Her, his, it. I did not. Oh, Clay, she, he is up there dressed like a woman right. in woman, women's fatigues, which is, that's against the book. That's against the rules. Right. You ain't supposed to wear that. Right. You're supposed to be dressed proper. That's correct. And that's wrong. Yeah. You got a, you got one of them dangling things. I almost said. <laughs> don't, don't. I almost did. Family friendly. I know, but you got, you know, you got an Audi, not an any. That's How about right. That? There you go. Uh. And and standing up there just looking like a clown. I'm yep. sorry. Yeah. Just looking like a clown. 100%, you, you, brother. 100%. You know, if, if I did the blackface thing, people would say that oh, was horrible. And goodness. I would say, yeah. that's horrible. What are you doing? Right. Really? What are you right. doing? Unless, of course, you're Justin Trudeau, and then you can get away with it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on who you are. You can get away with it. Right. Whatever. But that's woman face. But anyway, <laughs> our biggest problem with the security of our country and protecting our country is we're not diverse enough. Yeah, that's that's that we is our number one issue. Number one issue is we don't have enough mentally ill people in our military. That's right. That's right. And we need Isn't to include amazing? more. That's and amazing. we would be way better off country. Oh yeah. And folks would fear us. Hmm. Amazing. They don't even respect us anymore. No, no. Well fear went out the window. Yeah. Three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Well, as soon as stumbling, bumbling Joe Biden got up there and said, uh, you know, if if, if Russia uh, attacks Ukraine, then they're going to they're going to pay for it. Unless it's just a small little incursion and we'll overlook that. <laughs> you remember that? Oh, my goodness. And, and, and of course, and, and the Afghanistan withdrawal, that was that that just sucked away any respect that people had for us as a country. And. You know, just to leave all and that. And it's just one right after the and, other, and then, one then right after the other. The trillions of dollars mm-hmm. that the taxpayers are paying out. And that's a good little segue to what they're doing in California. If yeah. You're, if you're an illegal migrant in California right now, you, you can get a, a home loan. It's not a loan. It's a home give me. It's you, kind of. There is some stipulations. Right. And, I, and I'll go over it. If, if, if you, you can get a loan for 20% of the property value. Right. You don't make monthly payments on that at all. Right. When the house, if when if and when you sell the house, that's when you pay the loan back. Oh, there you go. So if you don't. Uh, yeah. I just don't get it. Yeah. So well, uh, uh, what's, what's an average house in California cost? Oh. Half a million half dollars? Half a million dollars. I mean, I'm just going to guess. Well, in 2003, when I left, the median home price was three hundred and forty thousand dollars. So, so probably half of me would yeah. probably be a pretty fair guess. Yeah, uh, I'm not a mathematician, but that's a pretty good chunk of money. It is. It is. And, and interest free and payment free. You said yes, payment free, and it just sits there. Wow. Wouldn't our homeless pets or just our homeless? Yeah. Our homeless children. Yeah. Wouldn't they love to have a home? You know they're they're sleeping in the back of a 1987 Buick. If they're lucky, yeah, they or they've got a, a few tarps strung together, right? Or somebody done robbed them of their tarps, and yeah, and 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 we have that all over the United States. But you know, are these illegal migrants that are, in my opinion, uninvited, right? But they hollered, "No, Joe Biden told us, come on." Yeah, well, he did. He did. He, he did. I remember. I remember he, the exact phrase: "Surge the border." Yes. That's what Joe Biden said. And they created an app you can show up. Yep. But do you hear this? People using the app um, with our tax money, the State Department is flying into Mexico 
loading these people on airplanes and flying them back to cities, and they refuse to tell the American people who they are, where they're going, or where they're from. Or how many. Yeah. We just found out they just admitted last Well, they said 380 week. some odd thousand. Yeah, just, that's what they admitted to yeah. last week. Man. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's almost half. We're million. not even forcing them to cross the border anymore. They we they, we don't want them to get their shoes wet. We yeah we you know we're flying in and, and picking them up, and we don't get to know anything about these no. undocumented illegal aliens. Yeah, but you know, are they illegal? Are yes. They? How? Yes, Explain they are. Explain to me how. Okay, I, I I can do this. I can do this. Let's say, all right, let's say that I go out and I rob a bank. Okay. And with the money that I stole from that bank, I pay off your mortgage and give you a handful of cash. You are now in possession of stolen funds. You you are just as you're just as culpable as I am. If I knew about it, no, no, not according to the law. If you're in possession of, of st- something that's stolen, know it or not, I would you be, can be held accountable. For if it. you paid off my mortgage, that would be in possession. But I said I'm, and I give you a handful of cash. Oh, well, we gave me a handful of cash. Yeah, so. The the federal government breaking the law to get these people illegally into our country does not r- remove the fact that they're illegal. See, they I, didn't go through the process. They didn't go through a, a checkpoint. And our federal law says in order for you to enter our country, you have to come through a point of entry. Okay. And but get, it's getting seems, on an airplane in Mexico City it, is not a point of entry. It just seems like it's 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 almost like maybe they're a, a gray, gray area somebody's trying to create. Maybe and and say well they didn't cross the border illegal and and sure the, did. and the in the air the person that that is is actually the one that was on the airplane said man I, I didn't go anywhere and go up underneath no fence or cross no river the government handed me a ticket well, in you, my home you, state you did cross the river though but not illegal they handed me a ticket and said here <laughs> come on over I was invite bro I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm say gonna, that is still you, you an what, illegal image I understand what you're saying yeah. but I'm thinking maybe this is another way of doing this. And getting around, I don't know. They fudge the law. Look at the two tier justice system oh, we goodness, have. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> and it's everywhere, all over. Right. Uh, they just threw a reporter in jail. The rest of the reporter, they didn't throw him in jail. I mean, they did. They handcuffed him, locked him in chains, leg irons, and paraded yeah, him up that's there. That's right. That's right. And he was there reporting. And there was other reporters. Because he there. was investigating January 6th. Yeah, he, he was at January 6th and he yeah. was reporting that there was other reporters there too that didn't get arrested. Right. So but they they reported for the right outlet. That's it. You know. That's it. They were speaking of They which, had the right agenda. Yeah. Speaking of which and agendas and and the right outlets uh uh MSNBC. The uh the the the, oh. the 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 female anchors of MSNBC apparently have their own version of the view and you had Jen Saki there and you had Joyless Reed there and you had uh Rachel Maddow there and a couple of others that I don't know or recognize. And they're sitting around this table, and they are just shucking and jiving, and having laughing, a good time, laughing, laughing, laughing it up. And Jen Psaki brought up the fact that she was confused that the Virginia voters in an exit poll said that immigration was their number one issue, and that's funny. And she they that's hilarious. laughed about well, that. Why wouldn't it be funny? Please explain. Yeah, well. Um, they I said, mean, they, wouldn't that be hilarious? The They're not that, bordered nobody. Exactly. That's what they, they said. They don't who, have a border. Who is their foreign country next to them? See, I think, man, maybe so they should be laughing. Yeah. A week prior to that, uh, a 14-year-old girl was raped by an illegal immigrant in Virginia. Hmm, not so funny anymore. And a week before that, uh, Lake and Riley was murdered in the state of Georgia by an illegal immigrant who had been locked up and set free numerous times before he murdered her. Yeah, not so funny uh, anymore. Georgia is a border state. Virginia is a border state. We're, Rhode uh, Island is a border state. We're a country with borders. Yeah. And that's what these ladies ain't Supposed trying to, to figure out. We're a country with borders and we're not protecting they're going everywhere. Yep. And as it goes south, look at New York. They have National Guard. Yep. Deployed in the subways of New York because the crime level. Is Governor here. Kathy Hochul is the one who did that. She was all about defund the police. That's right. Just four years ago, uh, as lieutenant governor, and now all of a sudden she's putting. By the way, unarmed National Guard. I don't think those were unarmed. They may not have bullets. Well, it, it, 
keep posse comitatus. I believe I believe that's the law. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. I believe it's posse comitatus does not allow military to uh, perform law enforcement functions. They can't be can't be legally armed. They're armed. Yep, they sure. Are. Oh, they're military police. Okay, never mind. Never mind. They're still military though. Well, but military police is the exception to that. Um, uh, there, there were a number of times when I was a police, uh, military police at Fort Knox that uh, we would get called off post to help out with the situation. Uh, but, but you know, their their crime level has shot through the roof. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and Well, people are being murdered in the subway. How many stories have we heard about somebody shoving someone off the police platform are in being, front of a subway? Police are being attacked. And yeah. Then, then attackers are letting that, that brag dude just let dropped all charges on the guy that beat up the cop. Yep. Around these parts, yep. it's assault on a police officer, and you face a ten-year sentence minimum. Ten years minimum. Ten years going to jail. Yeah. Ten years. Yeah. Oh, don't don't knock the fire out of one of our public servants. Right. And you'll be all right. Well, and and around these parts, if you or I or a whole bunch of other folks that we know were driving down the road and we saw somebody pounding on a public service servant, we're jumping out and helping. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm coming to the rescue. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I have what plenty. we're not going to do is pull out our cell phones and video it. No, no. And I have plenty of aggravation towards law enforcement. I, I, I truly do. But you know what? But man, that's a human being. He's trying to do his job. Well, here's the thing. If I'm driving down the road and I see anybody rumbling, right. anybody, I'm getting I'm going to get involved. Right. And especially though, a pub, that public service, he, he's just trying to do his job and not all police am I aggravated with. There's right. a whole lot of police. That are just fantastic people. Yeah, men and women, and they're doing it. They're we trying got to do some a in job, our family, and we need them. We, we got need some police. In our family. If you don't believe we need police, look at New York. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they've got, you know, uh, they're they shorted their police force. I don't know how many millions they oh. drew off their police budget. They, they it was a billion dollars. Oh God, a billion with a B. That's cut how that, much. They oh, cut. And now, you know what? A year later, or not even a year later. They have National Guard down there. Right. Oh, wouldn't them extra cops be nice? It'd be sure enough. Man. Well, you know, we need cops. And New York even has a, it's a <laughs> they have a separate police department from New York NYPD, and it's the transit police. Right. And so obviously the transit police are, you know, any any transportation in New York, which includes subways, Subway. buses, uh, I believe taxis. I think they, they, they but regulate they're over, them. They're just overwhelmed. Yeah. And they're overwhelmed with people. Overwhelmed, underfunded, understaffed. Yep. You know, and, and and then they have their, their their lenient law or not laws. The laws are still the laws. They're lenient choosing the pro prosecution of certain mm -hmm. laws, and then they're letting all these people out with no bail. They run right. off that guy that they're holding in Arizona. Yeah, he yeah. went on a whole, whole kind of uh, uh, crime spree. Ended up with attempted murder. Yeah, murder in one state and attempted murder two yep. two counts of attempted murder in another. Yeah. And and New York's holler, don't send them back to us. Marathon said, I yeah. don't think so. Hey, there's no way. I don't think no so. way. We will after he goes to the court system and he and he, and he faces sentencing. And serves his time. Well no, he, no, they said they can have him after he's sentenced. Okay. Because he, he's there's no getting out of it. New York would still release him. You, you, well you can't though. Sure they can. No, not not somebody that's already Sure they can. Well, I guess you could. You can do anything. Yeah. I mean if they're, you they're proving that. If you can uh Watch Venezuela release their prisoners out of, and empty their prisons because they're overcrowded, and then watch them march across our border right. and not apprehend them. Right. You can do anything. Mm -hmm. Well, you let the cartel come come floating across willy nilly. You know they're just traveling with folks. What do they call that? Oh, trafficking. Trafficking. And yeah. we're not doing anything about that either. Right. You know, little kids coming over uh, with a phone number pinned to their shirt. Have you seen the interview with uh, Joe Rogan and 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 Doctor Phil? I've seen parts of it. That's snippets of it. I'm 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 not I don't watch Dr. Phil. I've, right. I've seen him. I know who he is. I've watched a, a few episodes, I'm sure, right. here and there. Uh but that's watch that. If you if you ain't look it up and, yeah. and get a chance, watch yeah. that. Uh Dr. Phil is he his, asked he his asked Texan, the right, his Texans coming out. Yeah, he asked the right questions and, and then like any human being would be. He's blown away right. by what he hears. Yeah. Blown away. They come showing up at the border with phone numbers written on their arms. Or pinned to their shirt. Or shirts. pinned to them. Yep. And they're a product. Yeah. They're not a kid anymore. Right. They're a product. And our our 
Border Patrol have no choice. They're calling that number, and that van pulls up and picks up this child. And we have no idea. Nope. No vetting. We do call. Yeah, we call. And they do get a little briefing about know your rights. Yeah. This scared kid yeah, this that's traveled I don't know how long. Five-year-old that doesn't speak English. And you're going to say, hey, man, here I got this little book. Here's, here's your pamphlet. Yep. And it's called Know Your Rights. Yep. And, and, you know, nobody's allowed to do this or do right. that. And if they do, well, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. What do you tell them? Well, and What do you tell them? Do you tell them to call the police? You tell, well, and, and it's come in the out. places you're going, the police has been, been defunded. So It's come out that, that not only are a lot of these kids being sex trafficked, of course, but they're also being used as slave labor. Yeah. Working restaurants. Factories. Factories. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, one, uh, they busted a, a bunch of kids, not busted the kids, but busted the owners of a dry cleaner. Yeah. yeah in I New saw York. That. I saw and that. they're in this literally in a sweatshop. Yeah. Literally, literally, literally in a sweatshop. They're in the back cooking. And in the these, United States of America. These are nine and 10 year old little girls and boys. Now here, here's what No I'm school. Saying. This is in the middle of the day. They got no school. They're getting right. no education. They're no. getting no kind of health care. No. They're being, they're slaves. They're working. They're, they're, they're slaves. Yeah. And here's the thing that just blows me away. All right, so Letitia James is the uh, AG of, of New York. Um, she's the one that sued Donald Trump and, the, you know, this $400 million uh, fine and all of that. You know, Mar-a-Lago, uh, this mansion on the beach in Miami is only worth $18 million. Dude, but the, the, the vacant lot beside it's worth $100 million. Yeah. Um, that, that Letitia James. She's not going after these uh, these dry cleaners that are working these slave labor of these right. kids. She's now suing the world, uh, the nation's largest beef producer, because the cows are farting. Have you seen that? No. She, I'm, I, I kid you not. She is, here's here's the justification. She is now suing the largest beef producer in the United States because they signed a, a pledge, a green pledge on global warming, but they haven't done anything to diminish the cow farts, which releases methane into the environment and is causing global warming. Well, then they ought to catch it all in a great big jar and send it to her house. I think you're and right. Open the jar. Do you hear what they tried to do down at uh, um, um, King Ranch in regard to that? It's kind of interesting. No. So they, uh, under under their their big, you know, we you've been to the King Ranch. Yeah, we we yeah. hunted javelina down there. Yes. Um, the, the big... Uh, uh, cattle yard that they have. Um, they've got several, but they've got the really big one where they ship out and, and all of that. Um, what they did was they dug that whole thing up. They went down deep and they put in a methane converter, I guess it's called. And it's got, it's got uh, like, like hatches that you can open up. And, and they've got people that are hired to go shovel the cow poop down into that methane converter. And this thing converts that cow poop into power and they power a lot of the king ranch with that power um well look at there but there was a problem apparently maintenance or something somebody didn't oil or grease or something and the thing exploded are you being funny now they called it the herd shot around the world <laughs> <laughs> see, you, see you you were on the hook I for was. a while there it's your face i've known you way too oh, long yeah. I can that see little it. corner grin, you know, I when I get to the punchline. I blowing line. up, start yep. blowing up. You were really, you were, uh, you were trying to hold it together. Uh, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm getting the fed. Heard shot around the world. That's I'm right. I'm getting fed. Oh, man. Uh, so, uh, That's all right. That's all right. We don't have to worry about having cows. That's right. We, we they're can producing grow your own out of labs. cancer cells. That's right. That's we right. can take a cancer cell yeah. and grow a steak. What could be wrong with that? Yeah, what could I what mean, could possibly go wrong? Or or the Beyond Meat. Um Beyond, Beyond Just the name of that is I know it. I know it. Beyond Meat. What you know what's beyond meat is when I recycle that to the bathroom. Yes. yes. That's beyond meat. That's <laughs> meat going beyond. I made our mama belly laugh using one of your things. Uh, mm. When uh, Cindy ha had her surgery, we went down to the cafeteria and uh, we ate, and it was it was awful. It was awful. It was terrible. And we're walking back, and we're all talking about how bad the food was. And I said, "Yeah, well, it'll make a turd." And Mom almost yeah, died. Sometimes that's all you can say. Yeah, about yeah, it, it'll, it'll make, make a, turd. a turd. I'm not gonna die right now. It was awful. It was so bad. Oh man. So yeah, see, that's kind of. I remember when I was in the, the last time I was in that hospital. Yeah. 
And the food was pretty good. Well, the food they bring to the patients, not bad. Now, here's the thing. Um, we went down between hours. It wasn't lunchtime. It uh, wasn't breakfast time. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing we probably got leftovers. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Y'all got some straight. I ordered two uh, hamburger patties, and she pulled it, pulled them out of this thing that was sitting on the grill full of water. And yeah. Shook it off. Shook it off. Yeah. <laughs> I knew then it wasn't going to be good food. Oh, yeah. It's going to taste what everybody you might as well just drink the water. I'm telling you. Just let me have a straw. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Yeah, we'll call it broth. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> oh, man. That's pretty rough, man. Uh, so, uh, who do you, who do you, uh, who, who are you thinking is going to be the uh, vice presidential pick for uh, Mr. Trump? I don't know. I don't know. There's, There's a couple th- of really good options out there. There, there are. There really are. Uh, Tim Scott really seems to be rising to the top. Yeah. He'd be interesting. Um, you know, he's South Carolina Carolinian. Um he uh you know he he ran he, he ran a good campaign. I, uh, I think I think uh Vivek Tucker Carlson. <laughs> yeah, I know I know it. it yeah, we've seen that floated a couple of times. Well, man, get away from the politicians. He'd be fantastic. Get away from these. Vivek's too shiny and yeah, too flashy, and he's too uh, wanting to sell me a used car. Right, right. I don't want to buy. I don't trust him at all. In the he beginning, says, we liked him. We both. Did. I didn't. Well, no, because of his background. I said he's a snake in the grass, and I don't trust him. Yeah. His background. He's been backed and, and supported by Soros and Soros Foundation. Right. His old school. And the only reason he has money. Is because of the that. pharmaceuticals and and, and it, I think he's just a better Nikki Haley. Yeah, yeah. I think he's just I think he's a snake in the grass. Right. And he's shiny and he says all the right things and yeah. he wants to sell me a Buick and and I don't need a Buick right now. Right. Right. I, I need somebody that's going to fix my country. I need somebody that can't be bought. Somebody that you know I don't know didn't make a paycheck at all. Yeah. Now I wouldn't expect that. You know I wouldn't expect Donald Trump to do that this next time either. No. I no, would not. No. He's got legal bills to pay. Yeah. But. uh I would like to see where it's not a professional liar, right? That gets an office, right? And, and and that's what we've dealt with for the last I don't know forever, right? Is a liar that got in the office. I agree, and and, and they agree. are professional liars, and they tell the voters what the voters want to hear, and then after they're elected, it's almost like the big middle finger. Well, you you look at what's going on right now in the Democratic Party. All of a sudden, because we're in an election year. For the first time in three years, the Democratic Party is all about law and order. They're all about trying to close the border. Oh, yeah. They're all about, you know, all of these things that we have. But yet, that Kareem Lion Pierre, <laughs> she could not say that poor girl. She couldn't name. say Lakin Riley's she name. She couldn't right. even say the Riley family. Right. She couldn't all say. All the families that have suffered from this sort yes. of thing. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The- How dare you make my tragedy generic? Right, and then, and then blame it. It, it, it. It's not even. It's not even that it was made. And then she blamed generic. it on Donald Trump. And it wasn't even that. It was how quickly she dismissed that part of her statement. Yeah. yeah. She didn't. I mean, you, you should have said first off. You should have apologized and, and reached out to the families personally. Yes. That whole administration should have, and they have not. No. And then, and they then won't. for her to just say. Well, yeah, that's a tragedy, and all the families that suffered anything ever in the whole history of ever right. ought to be, we ought to keep them in our thoughts and prayers. And then immediately, that was the end of that, and move on to yeah. House of Republicans. But the Republicans and didn't Trump. support. Yeah. The Republicans yeah. and Trump didn't support a bill that sent more billions to all these other countries and barely did address the, the issue, wanted 5000 a day. That was part of the bill. Yeah. That's what you want me to yeah. sign on? Right. My answer is no. It shouldn't be not any a day. Any a day. Zero. Secure the well, border. And the money that was in that bill for, <laughs> for the border was to hire more immigration judges and, and, and more, more administrators. Administrators to help yeah. So yeah. Let's get them crossed faster. Move them along. That's what they said. Like an assembly line. They didn't say assembly line. Right. I don't want to put no words, but that's. In yeah, my opinion, that's what they were describing. That's exactly what it we was. We need to streamline this more. We need more personnel. Right. And and no, I don't want to sign that either. And and for that reason, oh, they stood in the way. And this is Donald Trump and Republicans. Yep. Fault. What about this family that suffered? Yeah. That's grieving. This but you know what? In the what eyes could of the, she in what the could eyes she of, accomplished? In and, the eyes of the federal government, one individual or one family does not amount to that much. No. Oh um, no, they do not care about anybody. 
former President Donald Trump, after that uh, train disaster in Ohio, uh, Palestine, Ohio, um, within a week, Donald Trump was on scene in a, a McDonald's buying meals for everybody. How long did it take Biden? It took Biden over a year. Longer than that. It, 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 I think it was, I mean, he just went. Yeah, I know. And it's been, God, that's had to have been two years ago. I think it was over a year. I think that's well, what I heard Well, that'd be over a year. Yeah. Took, took but it'd him. be, I think it's, and, and that's and, news media saying it. So, yeah. So, true, you know, it was true. probably, you know, <laughs> four a, years ago. A, a <laughs> it's year, over a year. Uh, yeah. yeah. Over, <laughs> and over a year. 29 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, I'll tell you what, though, um, every now and again, you get a glimmer of hope. Um, the United States Supreme Court came out with a ruling uh, this week, this past week, um, nine to zero. That's a skunk. Nine to we zero. We call that a skunk. Like if I beat you at, at something, nine to nothing, I'd be like, I skunked you. The three liberal justices joined with the six conservative justices, and the score was nine to zero that states do not have the right or the authority to take a presidential candidate off the ballot. And, you know, wow, I just think it's absolutely ridiculous and a waste of time, effort, and my taxpayer dollars for them people to even decide. You don't have it. to decide that. That's yeah. ridiculous. You can't make something up, you know, there. Well, he caused an insurrection. I was going to say what that one woman said. She said he. <laughs> yeah, I remember. And then they got that meme and Donald Trump going, mm. uh, but uh, he, he, did you charge him with that? Yeah, he hasn't been charged with it. Was he, he convicted, hasn't been convicted of, that? of it? Has he been on trial? I mean, is any of that? Well, and so can you just make up words? And here's the funny thing: the Jack Smith case, which is the January sixth case in in Washington D.C., he didn't charge it. Insurrection is a charge. It yes. is a criminal charge. Yes. You can be charged with yes. it. Yes, and he not, was not one of the January six people who have been charged have been charged with insurrection. Right. You know what they've been charged with? Criminal trespass. Criminal trespass. That's horrible. On public do, property. Do you have any idea the distance between criminal trespass and insurrection? Oh, yeah. Insurrection is a hanging offense. And it is a taking over of government. That's it, it's, Criminal trespass is a misdemeanor. Criminal trespass is staying at Walmart when they tell you to go away. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's the difference. Exactly. And and, and I'm going to even argue that they the, the people that they've charged with criminal trespass were not guilty of criminal trespass because the Capitol Police were holding the doors open for them. Right. And it is a public place. It is. It is owned and, and operated by the public, funded by now, the public, our taxpayers. That's now, not your office. What they could have been charged with is the same thing that that one congressman could have been charged with. And that is interrupting a, an official proceeding. Yes. that That is a charge that they could have been charged yes. with. Um, I can't remember his name. Bowman. But one, is Isn't it, it Bowman? I don't remember. I don't remember. I can't even pretend to remember. Yeah. I remember he was a, a, a school principal before he Superintendent. Became, was he superintendent? Yeah, so even higher up on, yeah. the, on the list and knew all about fire extinguishers yeah. and fire alarms. And, right. And all, I mean, how many fire plans did he go through? Oh, yeah, no in doubt. In his career no working doubt. in schools. Yeah. He didn't just show up one day to be the superintendent. But he thought it was a button that opened the door. He said, I that, got that, that red box that's on the wall that, that says, says fire in, in, the, yeah, in case of emergency. Fire. Yeah. Uh, I, I did, he just got confused. <laughs> and that's who's running the country. That's helping decide I'm telling how we're going to live our country. If somebody that's so confused, they don't know the difference between the exit. Well, he went over and ripped the signs there. Right. He could see. And then turned to that and say, this must be it. Yeah. Uh, it just uh, once again, two tier justices. Yep. Horrible, and uh, and and it's like I said earlier in the podcast. Everything they're saying that Donald Trump is going to do, or might do, or they're scared to do, is what they're doing. They're doing. They're doing, and yeah. they're doing it right in our face. And they're saying, "What are you going to do about it?" Yeah, yeah. Well, or or and if you think we're having a fair election this year, or, or ever again, or ever again, we've said that a number of times. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's going to be an election in 2024. You know, one of the things that worries me about the National Guard in New York mm -hmm. is things, crazy things happen on the East Coast and the West Coast before it yes. happens in the rest of the country. Right. And maybe somebody knows something. Yeah. About something fixing to kick off. Maybe. Maybe. And I truly, truly, truly believe, and you just uh, prove me wrong, that a lot 
the majority of the illegal migrants mm-hmm. that come across that border are not here for the American dream. No, no they're not. They, they're, they're here, here on a mission. As, on a they're mission. here on a mission. On a mission. That's and, it. And between now and November, uh, we are going to begin to see small scale, We've leading saw, up to large scale terrorist saw, attacks. Uh, we saw phone all yep. go down on a small scale. Yeah, as as a test run. I'm just, no, 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 no. That that was a software update. Yeah. <laughs> and then on. By the way, you know there's still ramifications to that. Really. Um, AT and T apparently um, they power a lot of medical billing. Um, there's a girl that I work with, and, and this is her story. I, I, I can't verify it, but right, I, right, I right. have no reason to dis- distrust sure, her. Sure. Um, she can't get certain medications that she's prescribed. Um, these medications, by the way, if she paid for it out of pocket, one of them is $900 a month. The other one is $1,200 a month. She can't get her medication filled because the system that uh, does that, that her insurance operates under, the medical billing system, is still down from a couple Thursdays ago when AT and T went down. Well, did you hear about the all the outage on Super Tuesday? Yeah, yeah. Bunch of bunch Imagine of media, that. bunch Imagine of media. That. Out, I know, man. Yeah. And you know, I just think their trial run. Well, and, and we, I think, like you said, sometime between now and November. Well, the day before, the day before the phones went down, it was a Thursday. The phones went down. The day before the phones went down, a bulletin came out from the FBI, from, from the FBI Director Ray, that said that China, for the last five years, have been uh, hacking into our infrastructure, our water supply. They've been hacking into our uh, logistics, truckers and, and trains and all of that to transport material back and forth around the United States of America. They've already been, they know for a fact that China is hacking into our infrastructure systems, our food, our water, our transportation. And they know that. And yet we let them fly balloons over the top of the United States. And we let them come over by the tens of thousands in California. And we push all the homeless out, fence it off so we can clean up the streets for the... <laughs> and, and you know, if you're a homeless guy, didn't you go, what the hell? Yeah. You could have done this years you, you ago. You evicted me. And you could have done this years yeah. ago. There's planners. And they did it. Overnight, literally, 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 literally and overnight. You know, there's still a little thing about where did all them homeless people right? go? I don't know. And it, Maybe it's amazing. Wasn't. Where did all the kids go from Maui? Right. We talked there's about that. Still, fifteen hundred missing, from what I heard. And 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 how come you can't get into the burn area, of Maui? I've heard that there was insurance. Well, guess this is here. You don't know. You don't know. Have you seen the uh, but the, the, the Glidden paint uh, meme on Facebook? Uh-uh. It shows a, a can of blue Glidden paint, and there's a house with a blue house that says Mark's safe from Joe Biden. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you hear what Joe Biden said in his yeah. interview? I played it yeah. earlier. Uh, he said that you, you see all these hundreds and hundreds of homes all burned up, and then there's one standing alone. Because it had the right roof. Now, I've grown up my adult life. I've done construction. Yeah. All kinds of construction. Yeah. I have never put a roof on that made you fireproof. Well, yeah, it's where the rest of your whole surrounding yeah. area was not susceptible to fire. Right. I don't even know what kind of roof that is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But it's connection yeah, that, with the color blue. Connection with the color blue. Right. <laughs> and I don't know. Once again, you don't, you can't trust anything you see. Right. Or hear. Or, or read. hear or read or anything. But you see these overhead shots, of these burned up places, mm-hmm. and they'll be like these blue roofs that, well, and that blue, property is not touch. And blue cars. In blue cars. That's interesting. I want to show you something. I, 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 uh, I quit doing blue tumblers. I was just with my laser say, engraver. Man, uh, I heard that uh, the blue, it barely. It, 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 I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but the where, where's that other cup? It's over here. Well, there's one behind you. Grab one of those. Behind over there. I don't know, but I'll see you. Just grab one of those. All right. So this is the difference. All right. Um, with, with a black tumbler, I get stainless steel underneath with a blue tumbler. It doesn't take all the paint off. I don't know if you can see that good, but there is a, there's a blue tint yeah. left on the blue one. Yeah. And I watched a guy with one of them layers, lasers that you can pop balloons with yeah. and latex and stuff, yeah. burn it. And he would burn different colors of stuff. And when it come across the blue, it didn't burn it. Yeah. And, Interesting. I, and, and I've, I've done a little looking into that. This and it's some actually tinfoil true. hat stuff. But it's actually true. I know. It's like a scientific, like a little experiment yeah. that 
they've been doing for years. They've yeah. done this for years. I know. And there's something about the, I don't know, color wave or whatever it is. Right. About that blue that it's not affected by that. And it's not every blue. It's a, it's, it's a certain it's range a spectrum. of blue. Yeah, yeah, there's a yeah. spectrum. Yeah, certain, certain range of blue. Yeah, baby blue is not going to do it, and, and dark navy blue is not going to do it, but right. there's a spectrum in there. That sky blue area. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just fascinating. It's just it, things um, that make you go, well, huh? And, Ten full hat, man. And, and the drone footage from the, the Maui fire. A number of. Blue cars. And, you know, part of the drone footage that I saw was from a, independent journalist uh -huh. that actually got run off and in trouble for taking footage and film. Yeah. And so I don't think he was on the, on the take, on the take at yeah. all. And, and he showed like, you know, the cars was really amazing. Yeah. Cause it would yeah, be, I know. it would be just, it looked like a, like a wrecking yard. Yeah. All the cars had been burnt. And then one right in the middle. The paint been burnt off of them. The aluminum the, the wheels aluminum, were melted. Not just the wheels. You know, the wheels about that. Yeah, the, the engine blocks. The engine, the yeah. aluminum engine block. But you know what? The aluminum transmission houses. You know how thick a transmission house is? Let me tell you something, though. Um, I, I, I investigated <laughs> a, a traffic accident um, here a few months ago. And I went out to the scene. Mm -hmm. And there was melted aluminum everywhere. So okay, this car caught on fire. And it melted the engine block. Oh, oh so all right, all right, that's all right. that's not not unheard of. Okay, um, you know, because right. I'd heard the same things you'd heard. You know, people speculating and whatnot, saying, "What about the fire's got to be ten thousand degrees to melt?" No, it doesn't, because I I, I witnessed it. No, and, and and aluminum is is a, a, a soft a, metal, softer metal. Yeah, you uh you you can have your own little furnace at home. Yeah, yeah, and melt and right. play around with aluminum and lead. And, yeah, and forge. So, so, yeah, yeah, and and you know gold and silver, softer metal. Yeah. It's a lot harder to forge steel. Right. To be up there, up in there, you know, <laughs> liquefying steel. Right. The yeah. heat steel up to, yeah. to to make stuff out of it. That's one thing. Right. Blacksmith style, right. sword style, right. making swords. But to cast with it. <laughs> but to cast yeah. with steel, you better. That's some serious heat. Absolutely. Some serious degrees. And and I'm not sure. I'd like to. Uh, you know, maybe maybe in my this week of working in at your night, spare time. I'll look, I'll look, but I, I want to say that there was also like steel yeah. that was melted. Could be. And well, you know, the twin towers. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a whole nother tin full hat. Right. You know, not even the twin towers. It's a building, building seven. Yeah. Yeah. The one where they were doing the investigation of all the trillions that we can't find from the Pentagon. And, yeah. and then it just collapses on its own. Right. I guess it fell out of sympathy. <laughs> that's exactly it. So going back to November, man, uh, we've got, uh, you know, we, like you said, we we had the 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 test run on the phones. Mm -hmm. I, I sincerely believe that was test run. By the way, I was one of the ones affected. Um, I was not, but I have an Android phone, and it's not. It, it doesn't sorry. matter about your Android. I know, person. but I had it was a way to it was it, yeah. I get a shot in. Yeah, let yeah. me have a shot. You got your Walmart phone, and I get it, and you got your Target phone, so. Yours is woke. <laughs> Bam. Enough said. I heard, I heard Mic a, drop. I heard a meeting comedian say that the new insult is you look at a guy and say, you look like the kind of guy that would buy his Bud Light from Target. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you, you've With got a bag of Doritos. Yeah. 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 Now Doritos. <laughs> they dropped that one. They not, dropped him. Not quick enough. No. Not no, quick not enough. Not quick enough. But they did. I, I watched the video last night. They, I saw they, that. They dropped him oh in. Oh, my gosh. Zazer, Zappy Doo. It just amazes me. Did you not see what happened to Bud Light? I, I think every CEO of every corporation should be forced to sit down and watch an hour, just an hour, of the general public's reaction to Dylan Mulvaney and his little Bud Light commercial. I think they ought to be forced to pour over the books of Bud Light. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. You know, what would happen if I punched myself in the face? <laughs> well, I don't know. You try it first. <laughs> yeah. And then you do, and I went, wow, that looked like that. Oh, your lip bleeding and everything, yeah. dude. Huh. Wham! Well, yeah. oh, well. <laughs> Dang, it happened to me, too. But, and then the third idiot is really the dumb. Oh, one. I'm telling you. Oh. You know, it, it's the whole cut your nose off despite your face. That's exactly what they're doing. So we had the phone outages. We, um, you know, we, we talked about this before. Um, our electrical grid, the, the, there are, what is it, 12 hubs across the United States mm. that are the primary hubs of our electrical grid. They have these transformers that uh, uh, are responsible for electricity across the United States. And these transformers were made in China. 
Well, and, and besides that, they're oh, unguarded. Very, they're very old infrastructure. Yeah. And they're not up to date. We, we have a weakened infrastructure. Yeah. You look all across our country, we have trouble when it gets too cold or when right. it gets too hot. Well, and two years ago, uh, on the West Coast, I think it was Washington. I, I could be wrong. Washington or Oregon, one of those two on the West Coast, um, a couple years ago, there was uh, the whole West Coast had a power outage. And they discovered exactly what it was. Somebody with an AR-15 shot one of those transformers. Wow. That was it. That was it. One fellow. One fellow with, with one an AR-15. caliber bullet. Yep. That does not go five times faster than any other bullet. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's on the slow end if you want to talk about bullets. Right. But if you put a forward grip on it, it makes it a machine gun. And if you put a 30-round <laughs> caliber magazine clip. in it. <laughs> A 30 round, round clip, 30 round caliber <laughs> clip, and put 100 rounds in the chamber. That's right. It goes five times faster That's than right. the speed of something. Oh, I'm telling you. It's just amazing. So, so our, our, our infrastructure is weak, weak, vulnerable. And, and, and vulnerable because, like you said, all this stuff is made in China. Who we know has been trying to hack into us for, right. I don't know, how many years now? I don't, I don't. As long as there's been computers, Clay, they've been trying to hack. Into I don't know that they'd have to hack into the transformers that they built. I'm sure they put back doors well, in. Well, there's, there's, it's still a. They put back doors in. Technically, it's a hack. Technically, yeah. it's a hack yeah. in because, you know, it's mine now. But it would be easy. Push a button. It'd be easy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's probably a, an app for that. Yeah. There's exactly. a program that's already pro. I mean, yeah. Trojan I horses. Think, they're our, our lifelong enemy. We've never mm -hmm. been friends with China. No. Uh, and now we're going to buy the stuff that's super important to us. Yeah. You remember when COVID Medication. hit? Medication. You remember when COVID hit? Yeah. And all the little key fobs, that, there was chips yep. in the key fob. Yeah. There was a lot, and there was other chips in the car. There was cars that were 99.99% .99 complete. But that couldn't come off the line. Because they didn't have these parts and pieces from yeah. China because we rely on them. Antibiotics. We were, we were running out of antibiotics because they come from China. Um, well, a good part of our meat. Yeah. Just amazing. I know. So between now and November, um, here here's, I'm not going to say prediction. I'm not, I, 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 I don't make predictions. I'm not no. a prognosticator. But here's what I think is very likely. How about we say it that way? I think it's likely that between now and November, um, we're going to see, first we're going to see tests. We're going to see some small um, terrorist attacks. Um, as a matter of fact, there there was uh, somebody that came out and said that we're going to see October 7th style terrorist attacks on Here. American yes. soil. Uh, oh, yeah. And I think it's going to lead up to a full-blown war on our, pro on our soil and uh, then the Biden administration is necessarily going to have to suspend elections and impose martial law. Absolutely. That's what's going to happen. Absolutely. And, uh, and I can you, see that coming too. And if you're not prepared for that, um, God help you. Well, you know? and, and you, if you think, you know, I, uh, you sent me that video. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. John sent, Lovell. <laughs> yeah, you sent me that video. And, and the one guy says, you know, uh, that he thinks... That people are going to a lot of people hole up in their house, and when they run wait, out of food, wait they're going to the wait government for, to rescue them. And 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 I'm telling you right now, the government's not caring about anybody. No, no, anybody. Man, decades ago, decades ago, George Carlin talked about this. Oh, I know. And he said, if if something catastrophic happens in the United States, you can't wait on the military or the police because they're going to be at home protecting their family. That's right. That's what George Carlin said. Decades ago. I mean, you had, you put yourself in their shoes. What would you do? Yeah. If something catastrophic happened and right. I wasn't at home, the first thing I need to do is get, get home. home. Yeah. I need to get home. I need to protect my wife and my children. That's right. That's Above everything else. My first priority is to get home. Yeah. If I'm at home, then I need to stay home. stay home and hold up. That's exactly right. And, you know, you got another thing they were talking about, you know, what... Or I've, and I've heard other people talking about, what are you going to do when that neighbor comes over right. and needs food? Yeah. Do you help them? That's one of the things John talked about last night. There, on the, there's, a, there's a little video. girl and a little yeah. boy, and they're both six and seven years old, and there's a mom standing there, tears running down her face, obviously hungry. Mm -hmm. Kids are scruffy looking. Yeah. And you've got... 90 days, six months worth of food storage. Right. Do you help them? Well, as a Christian, 
Christianity tells me I do. However, there, there, there's a difference between a benefit and a liability. If well, let me let me throw the the ugly part in. Yeah, you give me that food today. Right, I'm back. And tomorrow. I'm like, I'm like, man, thank you. You have no yeah. idea what this means to me and my children. Right, you are you're a lifesaver, and I think you're the best thing ever. Right, because I'm eating, and yeah. now my belly's full, and I can't believe. And what I'm a back kind tomorrow. person you are. That's right. Yeah. Then I come back tomorrow. Let's say you help me out tomorrow because you're like, man, I know he's been hungry for a couple of days. Right. And I once again I go to my back to my house and I'm telling my kid, that's the kind of man I want you to be. That's the kind of person that guy right there. Yeah. You see what he did. Then I come back that third day and you're like, look, I'm really kind of running low on my supplies too. Right. If I feed you today, neither one of us going to eat next week. Right. And I'm like, dude, you have to. And like, man, I can't. Now I go back with a different attitude. Right. And I'm mad at this guy. Well. And then I go, I say, wait a minute. And then I really start getting hungry. And I know you have food. Right. I know you do. There's no question about it. Yeah. You just denied me. Yeah. You had at least a week. You said it. Right. And now I can do nothing but think about your food and how I've mm -hmm. got to go get it. And no longer are you my friend. No longer do I look up to you. Right. Or what a good human you were. You're, be what you're between me and that food. That's right. You are actually starving my children. Yeah. And I can't stand for it. Right. So now what? Yeah, exactly. Now what? Exactly. Now, if you wouldn't have gave me that first little bit, would I have gone on to somebody else and tried to get somebody else? You don't know. Right. You, you can't. Right. Not, you can't predict. So, well, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Have you seen the movie Book of Eli? Yes. Okay. There's a scene in Book of Eli where uh, Eli is, is traveling, um, and there's a woman laying down on the ground crying out for help. And Eli goes over to try and help her, and three dudes come out to rob him. Right. Um, that's a that's a scenario. Well, and that happens right now all the you time. You look out that door, and you see that woman and those two kids. The minute you open the door, you're bum-rushed by five guys. Right. And it's already happening now with just home invasion. Yeah. And we're not even aware. Yeah. Apocalypse hadn't even happened. I know. Armageddon ain't struck. We still have our electricity. I'd say that's regional. And if you lived in Chicago, Detroit, had, New York, it, it L.A., it, you would think you're in the apocalypse. Well, true. And, and, <laughs> yeah, it's happening more. This is like almost a trend, you yeah. could call it, where this is happening, and it'll be a woman, mm -hmm. and she'll be half tattered and whatnot, you right. know, and, oh, I, I'm knocking on the door. You yeah. know, I'm broke down. Yeah. Or, or I, I was I just ran, in an accident. Yeah, That's or I ran away from an abuser or right. whatever. Use that sympathy. Play that sympathy mm -hmm. card. And... Hopefully, it's a Christian or a kind person, and when you open the door, now you're a victim. Yeah. Yep. Once again, I, I don't even walk around my house without being armed. Right. Because you don't know who's going to kick in your front door. That's right. I agree. And I this, agree, I man. Mean, and we live in a little bitty small town that the odds of that happening are not zero. Right. I don't care what they are. Well, you can give me any number you want. What they are is not zero. Well, and, and I see this crazy stuff goes on all across this world right. that happens in very small towns, yeah. South Lake shooting. Right. <laughs> I see all this. So it's as long as it's not zero, right. I'm going to do what I feel like I need to I do. I guarantee you that the uh, the members and the pastor of uh, White Settlement Church right. thought it would never happen. Exactly until right. Until it did. Yeah. Until, until it did. It, until it did. Um, until you were faced with and it. And frankly, uh, to be honest with you, taking into account what I do for a living, I'm probably a little higher up on the, the possibility scale than, say, you are um, because of the people that I interact with and people that I deal on with a daily on a basis. daily basis. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I went down. I'm not going to get into details, but right. uh, I drove five hours south of here and uh, had an interview with a guy that has been terrorizing somebody for 30 years. And I, 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 had, I had that interview with him. 30, 30 that's years. That's commitment, bro. 30, oh, you have no idea. That's life. a mental. That's obsession. That's weird. That's that, crazy yeah. obsession. Yeah. And that's and, like you walk into his house and he's got somebody's picture posted everywhere. And I went down there um, under the guise of being on this dude's side. Yeah, that's it. And I got him to spill his guts and I'm going to use it against him. Now, what's the chances that this dude finally puts two and two together and he wants a pound of flesh for me? Right. You know, you never know. That's um, it. I, that's I, worked a case, never know. I worked a case that involved Aryan Brotherhood, Aryan Circle, the Cossack Motorcycle Club, and the White Knights Motorcycle Club, which I didn't even know existed. That's the Ku Klux Klan's motorcycle club. I didn't know that they have, they have a motorcycle club, the White Knights. Those four organizations were all involved in this one murder case that I was working. 
And I'm out here interviewing these dudes. That's when I bought an alarm system for my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt, man, no doubt. But we we just we live in a crazy world. You we gotta, do. Well, when our FBI, the director of the FBI says, "Hey, when you the need governor to be able, says," well, first it was the governor. Yeah. And now the FBI is saying the same thing. Yeah. Right? And then we have a higher ranking people in our FBI and our CIA that says it's it, it, it's imminent. It, it right, imminent. That's yeah. the, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. It's not about if. It's about when. The governor of the state of Texas came out, this is about a month ago? Maybe not that long, maybe a month ago. Maybe a month so ago. Recently. Came out and said publicly, if you can, you need to be armed. And then he said, and if you can't, you need to be aware of your surroundings. Yeah. And literally said, head on a swivel. That's right. Isn't that crazy when your governor tells you, arm up, boys? When in your, ask yourself, there's been a few times in my life that somebody's used that term, head on a swivel. Yeah. When in most people's life has that been used? It's been in used the in your life a lot more than yeah. mine. In the military. But when has that been used? It's been used when you're in danger. Yeah. Another place it's been used is I've, I've worked some very dangerous construction jobs. Right. And there's a lot of overhead dangers. There's a lot of swinging metal. Yeah. There's, I mean... When, when you're, you're dangling off of a half constructed bridge off of a rope, yeah, <laughs> tie and steel. You're, you're, and then, well, building Oakley Union, you know, your yeah. head was on the swivel. You're, I, I flew steel up and through the air, right? And you got to duck pipes and stuff. Yeah. I mean, you can get knocked off you that get, in a minute, but head on a swivel was used then. Head on a swivel was used in the military. I'm yeah. sure it was used when you was law enforcement. Oh, absolutely. It's not used in civilian life. No, it's not. It's not. Um, not regular civilian life. I mean, I obviously was situational civilian. awareness is yeah. another one of those terms you don't hear you don't in hear, civilian life. Right. If you said that, if you asked somebody to explain that, yeah, ninety uh, percent of the people wouldn't really get it right. Right. Oh, uh, you know what else they don't get right? This is completely off topic, but That's it just right. makes me laugh. Is I saw them on the college campus. And then off the college camp, same guy. And he was interviewing this different people. Yeah. And he was asking the same question. And it was a range of people from college age, boys and girls, to middle age. Yeah. Men and women. Right. And the question was, what does D.C. in Washington, D.C. <laughs> stand for? <laughs> Clay, you would not believe. One of them was direct country. Oh, there we go. Direct country. Washington, direct country. She said it proud. Yeah, she was certain you know what's real sad about that this girl is probably about 35 40 years old oh wow she said oh washington direct, direct country that <laughs> guy what <laughs> what <laughs> oh my one goodness girl, one girl said uh it was her and her boyfriend they were in college in college in college in college, college they student. passed tests to get in college they grad they went through school and there's a good chance that you and i are going to pay for it yeah oh, yeah yeah but in college, and he said, the girl goes, well, what do you mean? And he said, in the in the word or the term, the place, Washington, D.C., what does the D.C. stand for? She said, it doesn't stand for anything. It's just D.C. Oh, that's funny. And, she, and, and he said, and the boyfriend said, yeah, it's just D.C. And the guy's like, what do you mean? He said, so they could call it D.C. Yeah, so they don't confuse it with Washington State. <laughs> it's just, it doesn't stand for anything. Two people at all he interviewed, and it was you could tell that he really it wasn't edited. It right, was, he flowed through. Now there was an edit between the college campus and, and yeah. out on the street. Yeah. There, there was a pause. You know, a, you could a clear break. You right. could tell. Right, they didn't try to they didn't try to merge it. Or yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. They stopped it and then started it again. Yeah. And, and but yeah, two people on the college campus on the college campus got it right. Yeah, that's crazy. Two people out of how out of how many. Oh, I don't know. A four-minute video. Yeah, and that's all he was asking, and it yeah. was a, a crowded area. Right, and he was at here, and here, right, and here, right, and, and excuse me. Yeah. So well, a four-minute video. So half of that. How many people can you? Have? I don't know. A dozen or more. Right. The same, but the same kind of videos. You see them. <laughs> um, the exact same thing. They're on a college campus, and and they're asking these college kids, "Who's the sitting vice president?" And they can't answer it. They'll ask them uh, time, too. Yeah. Show them a clock. Oh, yeah. That's a quarter to two. <laughs> a quarter to two. And they'll be like, nine. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, no insane. idea. Or ask them uh, what uh, 
how many dimes are in a dollar? Yeah. Yeah. Just amazing to me. We are so, so Clay, screwed. When me and you <laughs> when me and you were this big and we knew about ice cream trucks and whatnot. Right. We knew how many dimes were That's in a right. dollar. That's right. That's right. Because we knew how much that ice cream was. And how many dimes we had to find, or how many Coke bottles we had to gather, That's right. and how much them Coke bottles were worth. Right. And we knew how to budget our money so we could get our Copenhagen. We were economists. <laughs> we could get our Copenhagen to share. And, and, and the ice cream. And our ice cream. That's right. We had that figured out. We were economists. And we also would buy a gallon of gas for that go-kart. That's right. That's right. And we had a budget. That's right. We did. We, we... <laughs> Well, folks, it has, it, our, our time is up. Um, you know... If, if you enjoy what you see when you tune in to us, we certainly encourage you to, to like, comment, subscribe, uh, and let us know. And, and if you disagree with something that you heard, tell us about it in the comments. Sure, yeah. We'd we'll love to have that anything. conversation with you. Um, you know, um, I, I always look forward to our Thursday morning. I do, too. You know, um, it, to me, it's almost like a venting session. Oh, I know. I <laughs> you know, know. You get all of this crap off of the news and, and, and society, uh, yeah. and it just... It, it, Fills in, fills in, fills in, and then we can come here and just vomit it out. And usually, <laughs> usually I prep for it. Wednesday yeah. night, I'm yeah. usually, you know, I work nights, so Wednesday night, I usually fill my head with all of it up. Right. Sometimes I get so much crammed up there and I forget to say something, and then I'm leaving here and going, oh, man, I forgot that. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, as always, uh, my brother's got a parting shot of wisdom for you. Take time to be kind. Amen. And it's cheesy as that sounds, but it just doesn't cost nothing. You never know That's right. the impact that you have on somebody else's life by waving. Yeah. Or smiling. Yeah. You know, I gotta I gotta end this on a on a brag, not on me. Um we uh you know, we went down south, like I said, five hour trip down there, five hour back, and uh gotta stop and eat. And so we stopped at a, an IHOP there in uh, Decatur. And um, this dude, this waiter that that wor uh, was working with us, just phenomenal, just neat guy, great personality. He was Johnny on the spot, got our orders right, he cracking jokes with us. I mean, just a good dude, right? And uh, came time we we're, we were done eating, and I told him, I said, "Man, you you are a breath of fresh air." I said, "You you are phenomenal at your job, and I really appreciate you." And he's like, "Well, you know, I, here's the difference. I actually care about people." And we had this little conversation. He comes back with our bill and he says, you know what? Thank you for the compliment. You got 10% off and handed the, the check to Mindy, the boss. So Mindy whips out her uh, credit card and gives it to him. He goes and runs it and she comes back. And I said, wasn't that really nice of him to give us a 10% discount? She says, yeah, that's why he got a $20 tip. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, kindness. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. I, had a, I had a 10 minute conversation with the guy at Jack in the Box last night. We visited. He asked me how I was doing. I said, Blessed more than I deserve. Yeah. And he's like, Amen, brother. And then we had a right. we had a wonderful conversation. Yeah. And talked for about ten minutes sitting in the drive through wasn't nobody behind me, wasn't right. holding nobody right. up. It yeah. was late. Right. But uh just a wonderful guy. And what a nice, kind guy. Yeah. Talked about his son. Isn't that and neat? he's got a little baby boy and he Isn't that I, neat? we just talked about a lot of stuff. Talked a lot about God. Yeah. And to sit there and talk to a young man, young man. Right. He was in his twenties. To sit and talk to a young man nowadays about God at a drive-thru. Yep. At Jack in the Box, willy-nilly, just out of the Fantastic. blue. Fantastic. Good stuff, man. Folks, we appreciate y'all. We care about you. We love you. And uh, Lord willing, we will see you next week.